really quick while I have you. Philo, have you heard about it? Oh, it's the best. They're giving you 25% off two months of Hallmark, Lifetime, Up, GAC, The Sorts. The movies we're talking about, Philo. 25% off. Philo.tv slash DTH. Don't, don't let this, don't let this pass you by. Philo.tv slash DTH. Here's the episode. This is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> I've had a fun week with my pals. <laughs> and I'm loving home our Christmas movies. <sighs> Hank, it's Panda. I've had a fun week with my pals, too. And I like Hallmark Christmas movies. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm Dan. Have you had fun? Oh, with my pals? Yeah. When do I not have fun? But this week especially has been fun with my pals, and I despise Hallmark Christmas movies. Uh And this intro. And this (laughs) is the the Deck the Hallmark Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Boy. Wow! Sometimes you just you make the bed, and we got a lion, and unfortunately, one of the one of yeah. the best intros, according to Best Intros Mag Weekly, it might be one of the best Friday intros. <laughs> Typically, our Friday yeah. intros kind of reveal. They're but lackluster, yeah, but man, lackluster. the luster was well, not lacking. Oh, the luster is not luster lagging. There. That's, exactly, luster that's there. exactly right. Um, more luster, John Luster or Tammy Luster? John Luster. John Luster. John sure. Luster. Easily. Easy. Tammy Tammy lost no, it. No, lost it. She lost her luster. That. You lost have a lot of Tammies that you know. I, I know so more. many Tammies and Crandalls. I mean, it's just absurd. You know what, guys? I don't know a single Crandall. You know ten at least. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay? Okay. Let me ask you this. All right. How many Ams do you know? One. Okay. Two, maybe. Green Ga- of Green Gables. Does that count? That counts. Okay. I probably know at least four or five. Exactly. Tammy and Cranler are the ands of my life. <laughs> you think that sentence made it better? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. It did. Yes. yes. I don't It's know. good for the economy. <laughs> Just do it. Uh, <laughs> Who is that guy? That's Joe Biden. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. I know. You say so. Listen, I, I had four years. You had uh, four years to work on it. Got too got caught him. up in the heavy, <laughs> heavy. <laughs> hey, I got that down by the end of it. Well, I got I got a few years to get this one out. Um, <laughs> hey, guys. Um, this is what I'm thinking. We talk about Harlan and Harlem, and then at the end of the show, we do a double decker of the week. I okay. love that plan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am rip roaring ready to go. Oh, me too, buddy. It's definitely not the last movie of the week. No, it's definitely not. not. Um, man, Fridays are exciting around here uh, for a couple of reasons. We do the double decker of the week. We have Wait, do this we do is the last double week. decker of the week. <laughs> we do, but we also each share three things from our past that spook us out. That smoke us out. <laughs> Spook us out. We call it Spooky Friday. I had three things that smoked us out down. I'm sorry. Do you want me to go with those? What did you have? Uh, I had smoked us out as okay, well. Okay, fine. You, you guys do. Just share share one of your smokes. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, st- uh, Stink Bomb. Yeah. Smoke me out. The uh, the hot spot service station uh, down the road in Hopkins, South Carolina. The cigarette smoke was overwhelming. Yep, smoked smoked out. me right out. The sound of uh, bumping in my attic. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, sometimes, uh, my dad grills a lot and there's just a lot of smoke that just comes up. Smoke me out. The, uh, the fog, uh, artificial fog machine at the monster truck rally. Smoke me right out. The ghost in my closet that would peer at me and wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh, one time I was I was just lighting a bunch of fireworks and uh, just popping everywhere. Kind of smoked me out. Yeah. Uh, B- B- Bobby Smoke Shack, where they do uh, barbecue and also vapes, hookahs, and just tobacco uh, all in one location. And it is, it's pungent and it, it smokes me out. Um, my dad on the 4th of July. 
Okay. I thought he was going to die smoking meats. And that, and that spooked, spooked you out. You out. Spooked me out. <laughs> um, guys, are you ready to dive into today's episode? Friday episode. Are you, are you guys ready to dive into today's? Yeah. Yep. Let's hey, do wait, it. Are we going to do the double decker of the week at the end? I just want to make sure. <laughs> it did shove off. Uh, Holy Harlem <laughs> originally aired on November 14th, my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, happy brother. Happy birthday. Which one? Pat. Hey, Pat. Pat. Happy birthday. Patty. You did a let's eat Patty. one this one time. That's right. He, he did. did. Yeah. It went a little something like this. The Let's Eat or these? No. Okay. Um, the Pizza Hut dinner box. This is a dinner box, yeah. Uh, welcome to Harlem at Christmas time. Some might say it's a holiday in Harlem. Harlem. Uh, we meet Mama Belle, and she basically runs the neighborhood. She hates fruit baskets because she prefers presents over presents. Uh, we meet Jasmine, who is uh, actually in the city meeting a co-worker, um, but her, her plan is to uh, leave from that, go on a flight, not see her family. But she gets a notice that the package of fruit has been rejected. And uh, when she calls her grandmother to make sure everything's okay, why don't she get the, the fruit basket? Uh, she's uh, she acts, she trips up and says that she is in the city, and obviously that means she's gonna have to come. Like you can't back out of that because it's time for the Christmas jamboree, everybody. Christmas hey. jamboree. Christmas jamboree. That's exactly right. Once she's in Harlem, um, she runs into her uh, old best friend Caleb. She says, "Caleb's my best friend," and he says, "We were." And so, you know, things are real serious. Um, he's, he's a staple in the town. He's been helping out Mama Belle. And I think that the, you could say that they still have some sparks. Um, Mama Belle takes Jasmine to a thing called Yuletide Yoga. Mm -hmm. you, guys have, you guys have been there. Love the Yuletide Yoga. Um, and Jasmine uh, is go, getting ready to go into dancer's pose. And Mama Belle comes over to help her with that. And in the process of getting in dancer's pose, um, she falls over, I think, onto Mama Bell. I'm not sure. But they go to the hospital, and Mama Bell is uh, injured. Got a little uh, a, a, Achilles a, a, torn. Yes. Is that what it was? Yep. Yep. How about that? And uh, cast around, cast around uh, the, the leg. It's a whole thing. So you might be asking, what are we going to do about the Christmas jamboree? I mean, it's a big deal. Um, Caleb is a big part of this. I mean, he, he still knows what's going on, but Grandma, uh, Mama Bell, what are we going to do here? So Jasmine uh, is like, you know what? I think I can step up and I can help. I'm going to help you with the Christmas Jamboree. Um, Jasmine's parents are also in town, apparently, for Christmas. They don't typically live there. <laughs> She's been avoiding them um, and um, because, you know, you have to and she's putting everything together for the Christmas Jamboree she uh, creates a, a, ch a chart she's assigning people to on the, in the planning committee new jobs that fit what she thinks is their personalities but they all kind of say this is really really bad and Caleb says hey these people know what they're doing let's just let them do their thing um, at the um, the the Christmas jam which is a basketball tournament that's a part of the Christmas Jamboree yeah, it's all mm -hmm. the one big yeah this is the Christmas jam. The rest of it is... Uh, it's kind of like the Bramble Jam. It's oh. part of Bramble Jam, but it's not all of it. Right. Yeah. Christmas jam, though, is this, and then the Bree is the rest of the, the week. Bree. The Bree. Yes. The Bree. Um, anyways, they're at the Christmas jam, and Jasmine runs into her father, and uh, he's like, hey, I got some big news I got to talk to you about, um, but, you know basketball uh, let me just uh, tell you that later. um then caleb and jasmine play a little basketball game together it's real it's real cute uh caleb and jasmine then go to dinner together and she tells him that she's um she's not gonna stick around she's just here to help with the jamboree and caleb's like this is classic just gonna be friends not date no big deal um the restaurant owner wants to uh wants his place to be the spot for the jamboree and gets jasmine to agree with this then he uses it against her to create um, a, a restaurant rebellion. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, there's a slam poetry as a part of the jamboree, and Jasmine um, learns that, one, Caleb is uh, pretty good at the slam poetry. He looks real good doing it. And two, he, her parents are back together. And she's very unsure about this, uh, this news. 
Um, but instead of focusing on that, she's going to just uh, buckle down and focus on the jamboree. Mama Bell thinks it's uh, thinks um, that they uh, select a restaurant is a good idea, and asks Jasmine to taste test all of them instead of just picking the one. We we should uh, try a bunch of outs. So good. Um, a fashion show happens. It's also a part of the jamboree. Are you keeping track of all these um, things? Oh, I got it. I got it. I it for our jamboree. Locked in. Um, and um, Jasmine decides. Uh, that they should throw a um, a block party in two days. That should be a new thing for the jamboree. Um, and Mama Bell's like, this is not a good idea. And um, she's like, I think this is really sh- could be something that adds something. And you have added stuff to the jamboree over the years. And I think this would be a really great addition to the jamboree. Um, Caleb, one day, she goes in to talk to Caleb. And Caleb is a, a, a carpenter. He can build things with his hands. But that's not what he does. That's just what. That's just something that he likes to do. And she kind of suggests, "Hey, you should make this a part of your store. You know, sell your sell your work." Yeah. And to that, he, he just goes, goes off, off on her. <laughs> Says, <laughs> "Your little uh, block party, dumb idea. You're just gonna f- uh, leave again." You, no one wants you here. You're telling people what to do. So it's very intense. Um, and so, she, uh, and so she, uh, she leaves, obviously. Um, it's time for the block party, though. And uh, there's music and people are, are dancing and stuff. And um, things seem to be turning around. But then Mama Bell interrupts and asks Jasmine, um, hey, what are, what are your plans with Caleb? And that makes her very uncomfortable, and she decides she's going to leave the party early to, to, to think about uh, things. It's uh, Christmas Day, and Jasmine's having a blast. She is loving Christmas with her family. She hasn't been there in a few years. They're making mac and cheese. We get a cooking montage with less than five minutes less in the movie. It's awesome. And um, while cooking, she says, hey, good news, everybody. I got a promotion as the vice president of North America. North America. And that that means I'm going to be able to stay here more than more I was. Than I was. No, I'm not, it's going to be awesome. Um, it, then everybody comes over for Christmas dinner, including Caleb. And as uh, Mama Bell is getting ready to pray, she talks about how excited she is that Jasmine's going to stick around, to which Caleb is like, okay, let's talk. They end with a little heart to heart and they uh, they share their hearts with each other. And then they kiss big ones. Yeah. And that, my friends, was. A holiday in Harlem. That's exactly right. We did it. Let's take a quick break, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we will come back, and we will break this movie down. I love that song. I cannot wait. Bring it. You're going to have to. Guys, I'm so excited to talk about this. I have a newfound love, and that, that love is tea. Oh yeah, I love tea. I'm not kidding, dude. Is yeah. it the tea drops? It's tea drops. Man, come on. The uh, it changes I, the game. No it, more tea bags. Uh, yes, it's unbelievable. I absolutely love it. I have been um, drinking the uh, oh gosh, what is it? Citrus ginger Ooh, is what I've been drinking. It is stuff. so good. It feels so good on, on my throat. throat. Yeah, I have a you know here in the south. One day it's seventy, the next day it's fifty, Kills and then it's throat. eighty. Kills your throat. <laughs> and the tea drops is coming in clutch. And they have really fun uh, flavors that make you feel like you're in a Hallmark movie, like chocolate, gingerbread, pumpkin spice, sweet pepper in it. I've tried them all. They're all wonderful. I'm a big tea drop fan. They make it so simple to make tea. No more guessing how long do I got to steep for, whoa, whatever. You just pop that little drop in there, stir it around, and you've got your tea. And I've got the tea for you guys because tea drops is giving you 20% off your first order. You got it. On the tea drops website. That uh, website is myteadrop.com. That is my, M-Y-T-T-E-A, drop, D-R-O-P, dot com. And you use the code deck the T. <laughs> That's a good one. Deck the T is going to give you 20% off. That is myteadrop.com, promo code deck the T. You're going to love it. It's fantastic. Another thing you're going to love. Philo. Philo mm. is sponsoring the entire season of Deck the Hallmark, and we're so happy that they are because they're giving our listeners 20% off, 25% off the entire holiday season. Two months. Going to last you through the end of the year. Thank goodness. 
Uh, and all you got to do is go to philo.tv slash DTH. It's philo.tv slash DTH. DVR unlimited for an entire year. philo.tv slash DTH. Hello, everybody. Welcome hey. back. Um, we're talking about um, a Christmas in Harlem. A holiday in Harlem. A holiday in Harlem. Gosh. Thanks for paying attention. Yep. I'm so sorry. I like the alliteration. I, I do like that. A holiday in Harlem. That's yep. nice. Um, let's start with the uh, the hot take where we share exactly the photo of this movie. And um, again, uh, you've been blowing everyone away. Yeah. The people, Thank you. Dude, GQ. 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 They moved you up. They moved you up. They did. Wow. Top 50 now. They had already printed it. They recalled the Mac. Yep. And they said, we got to make a change for this. Wow, this that's big time. I know. Yeah, I was pretty excited. Man. They moved you from they moved you from sixty seven to forty three. Wow. wow, that's huge. That's huge. I, I'm really so hoping that by the end of the year. Well, let's see what you do one. today, pal. Okay. What do you think about this one? Uh, this movie is, uh, you know, there's some fun scenes in this movie overall, but this this movie for me is uh, this is going to be a middle boy, uh, right right dead in the center. It's not good. It, it doesn't distinguish itself in enough ways to really to to, to elevate or distinguish it. Uh, it and, doesn't and, distinguish itself in enough ways to distinguish it. I stand by what yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah, that I checks, get it. That checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, and here's why. I think that there is, they throw a lot at you with this jamboree. But to me, there's nothing really super memorable that they do in this movie. Um, it all feels fairly generic. Um, that doesn't mean there's not some fun scenes in there. There's, But overall, for me, this movie is... Only okay. I actually liked uh, Jasmine. She she was Olivia delightful. Washington. Is that her name? Yeah. Olivia Washington. Yes. She's delightful. Uh, I really I would love to see her in some more movies. Uh, she was great. Um, I don't know if I was wild about uh, the lead Caleb Will Adams. She, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I was wild about him. Um, I just I I don't feel like he had. Um, a real strong personality that showed in this movie. Uh, and so I think you needed to have a, maybe somebody else who was a really strong personality to play off of Jasmine, and I just didn't feel that. Uh, and so for me, this movie's only okay. Uh, not the worst movie by any stretch of the imagination we've seen this year, but uh, at the same time, just not necessarily... Uh, unique enough to really stand out uh we've had a lot of really great movies this year and I, part of the other problem is this movie went up against one, one uh december night and and uh that that's that's tough because that movie was my number one movie uh so anyway that's where i'm at sounds like you need a tea drop yeah it does i would love that, that. you see it sounds also sounds yeah my throat, my throat's getting the, the old scratchy the old scratch i've been scratch. talking a lot yeah. well, hey you got the double decker of the week coming up yeah, yeah I'll, don't worry. Right. I'll save that her. is coming up. Good, <laughs> good to know. That's Thank good you. to know. It's coming over the back end. Yeah, uh, as long as we don't, I move yeah. things around. Who I don't knows? know. We could. Um, so around this time of the year, uh, we have the privilege of doing a handful of interviews, and they're a lot of fun. Sometimes a little repetitive. How do you start the podcast? Stuff like this. One of the questions that we get asked a lot is, "What's the? Tr what's your favorite Hallmark trope, and what's one that you could do without?" You know, yeah. And um, my answer that I've been giving this year, and the one that I could do without, is party planning. Yeah, I'm a little worn out by party planning, and unfortunately, this movie is not just party planning; it's jamboree planning, <laughs> which is a a full it's next level long week it's of a lot of parties. parties. Yeah. So, I guess you, in, on one hand, that is a, a a spice up of the party planning trope because it's not a, it's not a party it's a jamboree on the other hand it is just a long party and so you know it meandered for me um i i will say the cast uh of characters like there's a lot of fun uh, uh performances in this movie that kind of add a little spice to it but overall i'm just a little tired of the parties and uh, unfortunately, that's basically what this movie was. And so while I appreciate what this movie was doing, especially with the diversity, going to Harlem, hanging out with people that we haven't seen on Hallmark in prior years, and seeing some performances, some characters that we also haven't seen, um, that was really great. But again, just planning parties. And for that, um, it's just middle of the pack for me. Didn't hate it. Didn't love it. It's just going to kind of land there for me. And you, you know, you need those when you're having 40 plus movies. So there you go. Yeah. The biggest ups that we can give Hallmark this year is, is they've taken a leap from 
feeling as though inclusion is just including people from across you know the spectrum to actually including them within the cultural environments that we would find them. Uh, you know, Boyfriends of Christmas Past did a really good job of this. Christmas in Harmony did a really good job of this. There's been several that have done this. This one does it really, really well. Uh, we have uh, a, a, a POC director and writer. Keith Powell directed this movie. Monique Matthews wrote it. Excellent. It feels... I, I don't I've not spent a lot of time in Harlem. I think I've been one time. This feels like it's a neighborhood. It feels like it's a neighborhood of people that live together, worship together, play together, work together. Uh, Olivia Washington is is really, really charming and dynamic in this movie. The problem is is it commits the cardinal sin of being boring. It is a boring movie, and that's unfortunate because it's culturally, it doesn't feel like cultural appropriation. It doesn't feel like culturally miscast. It feels lived in and earned and written well, but it's almost like Hallmark feels like now that we've taken this next step that these movies now have to go through the paces of movies that we've done a thousand times before we let them try something new and different. And so that's unfortunate because it has a lot going for it. You can tell it comes from the eye and POV of someone that's been there, lived there, and it's written really well, and they embrace a culture really, really well. It just is boring. It's a boring movie, and that's unfortunate. It, the, the fight is unearned. The plot is... Not only unearned, is, it's aggressive. Random. It's, it's <laughs> absurd. It's wild. But it also, it's just, everything's very loosely like held together, and it's really more about mood and environment, which is fine by me, but the mood and environment tend to just be kind of silent sometimes. There's weird cuts in this movie, Uh and so it just unfortunately is just boring. It, 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 that's the best word to describe it. It will be also middle of the pack for me. I think there's been 16 movies. Probably got it ninth. Maybe I got eight, eight nine. Right, right there in the middle of the pack uh, is where I have it. I mean, it's just kind of benignly boring. It, yep. It's not actively bad. You know, Christmas Treasure, active, actively, actively bad. bad movie, right? This is not... Actively bad, mm -mm. Uh, in my opinion, but it, it just I w it could have been so much more. It felt like yeah. it could have been. Yeah. Um, all the feels we we're talking about the things this movie gave us feels. Panda. Uh, when they light up the uh, the the building for the first time, that is the best lighting ceremony we've seen this year. Of like an oh wow yeah. moment. Uh, they've been fairly weak this yeah. year. Yeah, you missed out on Princess Switch three, uh, which is one hundred percent the best lighting. It's absurd. But that's on Netflix. On Hallmark, you're 100 percent right. This is the best slide. It yep. was it was great, wonderful. Um, I gotta tell you guys, we've been you know we've been doing this a long time, and we've gone to a lot of festivals, a lot of you know fall harvest, a lot of Christmas festivals and whatnot. Um, I can get down with a New York uh, Christmas block party. I liked it a lot. I thought that was really fun. And um, something that I don't feel like we've seen a ton of, a little block party situation, it gave me feels. I, I love New York. I love New York at Christmas time, and I'd be 100% down with a Christmas block party. Um, I like Tina Lifford's character a lot, Mama Bell. I thought she was a lot of fun in this movie. And, She's so good. And, and had a lot of the best moments of the movie. Anytime the movie really started to lose me, she would have a line or two that would keep me awake or invested at least a little or bit. Or a magic so. trick. Or a magic trick of some sort. Yeah, yeah, like Secret <laughs> Santa where everybody's name is the same. So, yeah, I guess her. That would be what I, all I got. Um, let's take one more quick break. We'll come okay. back with the way, what, yeah, the, what the Hallmark. What about Double And uh, Double Decker of the Week, I think oh, it's coming yeah. up. Yeah, I think it's coming up. Um, here on Dr. Hallmark. Give me one more. Give me one more smoke. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure I can say this, but Tammy, uh, Tammy's big smoke shack. You said you didn't know any Tammy's. You said he knew all the Tammy's. I know one. Tammy's In his defense, sash. you don't know Tammy. I don't know you her person. You freak, you, you but went it to does her. smoke you out nonetheless. It smokes me More out every single time. More than fair. More than fair. Um, uh, uh, deep, deeps, uh, poor, poorly electricalized uh, auto repair. R.L. Stein's Goosebumps. Yeah. It's, it's time for Wait What is the part of the show where we talk about the things in this movie that made us go Wait What. I'm going to start my good friend Panda. Panda? Uh, I don't have many. Uh, the first one is the basketball court is just wild. They have chairs right there crossing over into the, the actual court the itself. Chairs are on the court. 
It's Dan, I don't know if you know this or not, but you're a basketball coach. I, you've uh, you've mentioned you it a time or two. I, I know that. And uh, wh- how can you? How would you describe this court? Um, the court is only playable by about seventy five percent. Literally, if you tried to shoot a three pointer in the corner, you'd be in the stands. <laughs> yeah, there's a, two rows of folding chairs on the basketball court. Yeah, while they're playing a game that's five on five. Yep. For it you, man. doesn't make any sense. It, there's no, aside from they couldn't get it in the shot. It's the only reason they do that. It's wild. Um, my only other, wait, what, is just actually questioning the premise of, of this movie, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> just that, huh? It's just that. Um, so Mama Bell's hurt her leg, and she has she goes on and on about how much this jamboree means to the community. To the community. Well, she talks about not missing a, a lighting, the lighting. Not, yeah, but and she's she clearly the, the one who's yes. been helping out with this, and that, that means a lot yeah. to the community. So when she announces to the community, hey, I've hurt my leg, no one steps up other than her, her aunt, granddaughter. Her, you're right. Yeah. Which makes me wonder, like, does anyone actually want the jamboree? Like, how come no one's stepping up to do anything? I feel like the granddaughter's step. I, I think, personally, that this is a classic... Grandma says she can't do it, so the daughter will step in, and she's playing match. That, that's that's what I, I think. think going on I there. think that's a yeah. But that that I think well, that's kind of goes into my what the hallmark. But well, yeah. you know, I I I don't think you're wrong. Yeah. Um. I yes, we should all be concerned about Mama Bell <laughs> injury, but we should also be concerned about how she got the injury. Because it appears <laughs> that our girl Jasmine, like, is just unable to lift her leg up, and during yoga, she like she like the the thing is literally just lift put your take your foot off the ground, and that caused her to 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 ruin to ruin Christmas. Yeah, yeah, it was a real tough situation for her. I, balance I, on one leg, but barely balance. To be fair. To her and not Mama Bell at all. Mama Bell goes, all right, let's go into this pose here. You all know how to do it. Yeah. And she walks away and tries to mess with her granddaughter. And she called her out. And, and it, like, Why well, can't as she- the yoga instructor, maybe at least start the pose for her. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, she, Grandma, uh, uh, Mama Bell doesn't know what, uh, what an org chart is. And I think that's just a context I mean, clue thing, yes. right? Yeah. Org, is, org chart. I think everyone would get what You'd figure it out. Yeah. You would yeah. get there. You'd get there. A list of all the dot .orgs in the world. <laughs> it's right. wild. Clearly an org chart. In a chart form. Yeah. Chart Not form. a list. Yeah. Flow yeah. chart. Yeah, it's a flow chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That makes it's, sense. It's, that I will say it's three million pages long. It's, it's unbelievable. very wild. Yeah. A lot of dot .orgs out there. Um, when they're getting ready for the block party, they're showing some of the foods, and uh, they, uh, one of the foods they show is a pretzel. Ooh. Top three most disgusting things I've ever seen is yeah. that pretzel. Top oh. three things. It's the one of the most disgust. Not just disgusting pretzels. It's one of the most disgusting things I've ever. There's no seen. salt on it. It looks like it's been like somehow like dried out. It looks wrinkly. Like it look. It looks like you would. It doesn't look like food. It looks wrinkly. It looks it's real all- bad. It looks real bad for sure. Um, and I will just say, I I was both impressed and taken aback by what, I, for my money, the latest baking montage. Of all time. Yeah. We are, 54 in, we yeah. are minutes away from the end, and we get a baking montage. Set the music. I thought that was great. I, Actually, didn't, see, I didn't see yeah. it coming. I didn't see it coming I, it's either. Not a conf- it, it's, not, it's a different type of wait what, too, because it was it's a taken aback wait yeah, what. Like, yeah. I didn't see like, it coming. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Dan? Um, the extent to which Mama Bell injures her Achilles is incredibly relative depending upon what's going on in any <laughs> given scene. Sometimes she cannot walk at all. Sometimes she can walk with a cane. Sometimes she can walk without the help or assistance of anyone, and there is no rhyme or reason to it. But my favorite part of that injury is, and we rewound it twice, is, and you need to go look at this. If you have this movie on DVR, go find this scene. There is a disappearing cane in this movie, and it is quite something. She's sitting there on the porch receiving gifts. She stands up. She puts the cane in her right hand, puts it in her left hand. As she turned the angle, as she turns with the cane in her hand, the angle of the uh, shot changes, and the cane is gone. It's nowhere in the scene at all. Gone. Poof. Gone. Just like that. It is a classic. Wait, what? We were wound it twice. It was just, you know. 
just a classic bad editing job, um, which, you know, her injury is very relative, so that's probably why that happens. After the jambore happens, not the whole jamboree, what's it called? The jam. The jam. The Christmas the jam. jam happens, they get the basketball out, the two leads do, and he's like, you, you ready to play one-on-one? And she's like, okay, horse or 21? And then he's like, uh, he says something. I don't know what he says with that mad crossover or something. And then they proceed to not play either of those two games. <laughs> Here are your two options, horse or 21. Let's play neither. That is basically what happens there. And then lastly, you mentioned it in your synopsis. That fight, the fight in this movie is one wild. of the dumbest. She's like, hey, what if you sold this stuff? And he's like, the audacity that you have <laughs> to tell me to sell things in a free market that I've made with my own hand. Jasmine. You should be ashamed Jasmine, of yourself. That Listen, if you run, run, no, run. That guy. That's not okay. That guy, w that was quite the response. It, it, he popped off. That was aggressive. Yes. It was aggressive. Dumb. And a block party. Who do you think you are? Dumb, dumb? Uh, yeah. That's they essentially... Are, they are falling in love with each other. And she says, you do such a good job making this stuff. You should sell it. And he acts like she just spit on his face. Yeah. Yep. I, I just have... Sell been, it. Sell How it. How dare you? I didn't know the devil incarnate was standing in front of me. <laughs> Next thing, well, you're going to ask me to make a website? <laughs> Try to make a living? Squarespace. Provide for my future family? Guys. I, it just it didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> Etc. That's all I got. Uh, it's time for the What the Hallmark. It's the part of the show we wonder what could have been. Maybe I'm as good as we were at. Uh, Panda? Uh, it boils down to this cane disappearing and everything like that. That's bad editing. However, her injury is very selective, as you point out, which makes me wonder... Did she actually get hurt? Whoa. That's a tough one because they're wheeling her out of a hospital room, which means she had everybody in on it, even the hospital. Right. So I'm not going to deny that there was an injury, but I think she is. Even but that would also explain the injury, the how it happened, because she almost looks like she pulls Jasmine down. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm on board with everything aside from the fact that the nurse is wheeling her out of the but, hospital. But, it, but if anybody could do it, it is Mama Bell. It's She's Mama got Bell. everybody yep, yep. on her side. Strings. Yep. That's fair. I like that. I, 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 I think that this has been a larger master plan. Mm. Oh, I Boy. love that. I love that. I mean, the injury makes no sense. All of it. I'm just saying. I want to know. They, they mentioned that um, Mama Bell mentions that these events haven't always been a part of the Jamboree. So they've slowly added some events over right. the, over the years. Um, the event that I'm most interested in the addition of is the fashion show. Yeah. It's a very fun event with custom made Christmas garbs. Whose idea was that to begin with? How did they convince you Mama just Bell? You wear some of that stuff. It was a bit that yeah. that jacket yeah, that guy yeah, was yeah. wearing. I I I I thought it was a lot of fun. I love a good I love a good Christmas fashion show. So I want to know how that got included in the uh, in the uh, jamboree. I mm. love it. I love it. I actually just want to know. I wouldn't mind hearing more about the history of the jamboree and how Mama Bell got involved and what it was to begin with. So mine's a little similar. Like, how did this start? Was it just like a big block party or a big... The block party seemed like a new idea. Was it something... How did this get going? We and, So we have a, a basketball, basketball game. Basketball jam. Fashion show. Fashion show. Poetry. Poetry. Yeah. Block party. And a block party. Is there anything else? Was that it? I think that's it. Yeah. So what was so the original... Was it... Did it jamboree? start... Was the was the Christmas Jamboree originally just a ba just a basketball game? Ooh, that's interesting. I don't know why. Ooh. And why would Mama Bell have to play in a basketball game? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe they've knows. recycled some. Maybe they not recycled, retired some uh, events. Yeah. Oh, it could be some older events. Some good questions, guys. Pretzel good toss. Question. We did it. Pretzel toss. Yes. Yeah, now they're eating those same pretzels. <laughs> yeah. From years ago, yeah. twenty years. Uh, we did, it, everybody. Congratulations. You might be wondering where's the. Where's the deck, the, uh, the double decker of the week? Right Are we here. doing it today? Right now. We're right Bring here. We're in. right now. Boop. Boop. Back it on up. Clear. Tell me when to stop, guys. Stop. Stop. Hey, stop. stop. What? <laughs> Gunshot. <laughs> um, Heather Cassatz. 
Cussets. It's K U S S A T Z. Well, he's panda would now. Cassats. Cassats. Yeah. <laughs> Heather Cassats. Yeah. Heather, uh, Heather, little known fact about Heather. What? Uh, she is the head uh, extreme spelling bee. Uh, uh, what would you call it? Like uh, almost the, the, the head honcho of it. She's almost, almost the head honcho. Right. Of the Second extre- in command. extreme What's spelling extreme bee. extreme spelling bee? Yeah, extreme spelling bee. So it, it's like a normal spelling bee, right? But if you misspell a word, uh, they unleash bees. They unleash bees. Yes. So what's extreme about it? It's just the bees? The bees. Yeah, the bees. That's pretty extreme. Okay. So she's she almost heads it up. So she's she like almost second in command of a spelling bee where when you miss a word, they... What kind of bees are we talking? Honey bees, yellow jackets, wasps, oh, bumbles? Wasps. Wasps. They're very aggressive. <laughs> I don't know if wasp is a bee, actually. <laughs> I, I think, think it is. is. They're very aggressive. I think very wasps aggressive. are wasps. How big is the space where these kids are? Uh, these are children. It, it, right. Adults don't do spelling bees. We're, we're releasing a, a swarm of wasps on a child here. Uh, no, no, no. This isn't anyone can compete. It's man. an adult spelling bee? Yeah. I okay. thought you would have been aware. This you, seems like right up your alley. You saved it there with the adult spelling bee. Yeah. Kids, not 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 kids. Technically. Adults. It would not be a kid. Dan, we're not abusive. No, this of course. course. We would ne- we're not doing this. This is right. Heather Cassatt. Right. Uh, technically, honeybees and wasps are from the same family. So okay, great. Wasp it is. Great. Yeah. All right. Uh, so do we have some sort of clip? Oh, I, I absolutely think we do. All right. Well, you want to cue it up, Trace? Sure. Hello. Welcome to the Extreme Spelling Bee uh, it's good to have you. I can't wait to cut these stingers loose on somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. First word. First word. Who's coming up? Is it? Is it Mary? Mary, get up here, Mary. <laughs> hey, Rick. Big fan. Hi. How old are you, Mary? Uh, I'm 34. 34 years old. What do you do for a living? I'm a waitress at oh, Applebee's. Get a real job. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to go? Hey, look, there's a labor shortage, and you should cheer on whoever shows up to work. Uh, oh, Okay. All right, whatever you say, Chief. Uh, listen, uh, your word is pantomime. Pantomime? Can you use it in a sentence, please? I sure can. Are those your pants or <laughs> mine? <laughs> mine? Incorrect. Ah! Release the bees. Here we go. No. No. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Ah! How many people are in there getting stung by bees? Now I was able to watch the clip. Yeah, okay, but uh, th- this is unfortunate because they don't put the other contestant in boxes. So if one person misses it, <laughs> it's bad news for them all. They right. all just it's coming after all of them. It is very extreme. So they're all pulling for each other. How does somebody win? Just by living? Does everybody die? Is this like a Hunger Games? How thing? do they get the bees back? Just do another round. I, they just keep bringing in this fresh shit. Like they keep bringing in fresh ideas. bees. Yeah, fresh shit. A lot of fresh. Ray, bees. how long have you been doing it for, pal? Well, when they find me over at Scripps, Scripps. I had to get a little side work. Right. So uh, I was driving for Uber one day. Isn't this your side work? This is my full time job. <laughs> read my contract <laughs> and read a book while you're at it. Thank you very much. Uh, I was driving for Uber Pool uh, and uh, had a couple folks in my car. One guy. You know, it was he handed me a track, uh, and it was about some sort of gospel of J- Jimmy Garfield. I don't know what that was. But the other woman in my car was Heather Cussets, and she talked to me about the extreme spelling bee. I said, I'm perfect. So when I dropped her off at the uh, at the landscaping store, I went in and I applied. You know, I will say, the more I'm learning about Heather uh, just from this yeah. little anecdote, the more I do question her judgment. Hey, Rick, give me uses something. uses Uber pool? Uh- <laughs> Just said, why was she at a landscaping <laughs> store? I just, have so many. That's the headquarters for the extreme bees. Just used a couple extra dollars. I mean, get I your just own don't in. know what it is. Um, Rig, really quick, something that smokes you up. Bl- uh, bl- 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 Miss Bliss. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with that. The Netflix with uh, Princess Switch Three, even mm. the switchiest. Uh, until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Check the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam Podcast Network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.